What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Turner here with the No Stress Midwest Pad. Wow, No Stress Midwest Podcast. Uh, we are in season one, episode four. We are lucky enough to be joined by John Kempen, who is a goalkeeper for the San Diego Loyal New USL expansion team uh, on loan from Columbus Crew. John, how's it going, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good, man. I'm uh, I'm really excited to have you on uh, for for quite a few reasons, man. The uh, one, the big thing that that I'm excited about is having an alumni on from the high school that I currently coach at. Uh, John Kempen, if you guys didn't know, is a Blue Valley North High School alumni. He is a Hall of Fame inductee. He is a state champion. He is a high school player of the year. He kind of did everything uh, while at his time in Blue Valley North. Didn't even spend all four years playing there. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, but yeah, John, so just kind of talk to me, man. I, I saw uh, freshman year, you came in and you were part of a state championship team, if I recall. What was kind of that experience like, man? Well, I appreciate you hyping me up there. Uh... Yeah, it was cool, you know, coming in as a freshman. Um, you know, that was my first time kind of playing with some older players. You know, when you have guys three, four years older than you, uh, it's it's tough sometimes to come in. You're maybe a little intimidated. Um, but the guys, you know, the guys were awesome. You know, made varsity team. Um, we had a really good team that year. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I was probably, you know, some of my funnest years was, was playing at Blue Valley North and um, getting to know all those guys. Uh, I played with my brother, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, which was pretty cool. And he played defense at the time, so it was kind of cool to play with him. Um, but just kind of creating those relationships uh, w was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, so you had uh, – was it Tom Holland as your coach? Was he the head coach then? Yep, Tom Holland was my coach. We still kind of stay in touch uh, every now and then. Um, but we had a really good year. Uh, we we got to the playoffs. We went five games in the postseason unbeaten. Mm -hmm. We allowed zero goals. Um, we won state uh, state championship. I think we finished fifteenth in the nation. So nice. that was uh, yeah, that was really really cool. That as was a freshman introduction to high school soccer is a state yeah. championship and allowing zero goals going into uh, the the state championship game in the playoffs. That's awesome, man. Um, One thing I don't miss is the running, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's kind of why I became a goalkeeper. Did, did they have the things called Canucks while you were there? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard about them. I, I don't typically do them, but I've heard the uh, the horror stories about those. So, yeah, I guess they were they were real. Um, so, yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been lucky enough to meet you and your brother uh, when I did an alumni game the very first year as a head coach. Uh, we had a few people come out, you know, I think your brother maybe was a 06 high school grad. Do I, is that right? Or, uh, 07, no, 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 09. Oh, nine. Okay. So yeah. older, older around my age, I was an 07 grad. Um, but it was cool to see a lot of those guys there. Um, and then, so Kempen, uh, you played your freshman year, you won state, then sophomore year, you go off and you're invited to the residency program. Is that right with U.S. Soccer uh, yeah. down in Florida? How was how did you get invited? How did how did they find you? What was that like? You know, fill fill us in here. Yeah, well, I've actually been on the, the national team for every single age group, uh, even the senior national team. Um, but I was with the U15 national team at the time, and you know, I was playing well, uh, so forth with my clubs in Kansas City and doing ODP. And so they have something called residency program, which the U17 national team, we all get together. We go down to Florida, uh, Bradenton, Florida. We live together for the year in preparations for the U17 World Cup. Uh, so, you know, basically our day-to-day day -day, uh, involvement would be we woke up, went to training, uh, quickly came back and showered. Uh, we went to a private prep school, so we would get changed, you know, in our college shirts and so forth, khaki pants, and yeah. then we'd bust to school. Uh, and the school had kind of athletes from all over. They had tennis players, you know, from uh, Asia. They had football players, up-and-coming football players. They had lacrosse players, you know, soccer players. So it was really cool to be in school with a bunch of different athletes, um, you know, and then we'd come back, do our homework and so forth, and, and do it all over again the next day. Uh, 
so it was a little bit like a boarding school. Um, you know, it wasn't as fun. I always say our, our favorite thing to do down there was to go to Walmart on Sundays because they had a McDonald's inside the Walmart. Uh, and that was the only fun thing that we were able to do. Um, but it's definitely something that I had to do. I don't think I'd be where I am today without it because um, we were so, so, so focused on soccer. Yeah, and, and for the listeners, the residency program is no longer in uh, in effect. I, I think it's been changed into like IMG Academy now, and um, there that's where um, – dang, I just saw it on TV. There's some, some sports team that's playing down there. I think maybe the WNBA is playing at the IMG Academy or something I yeah, saw. Yeah. Um, Probably. So, yeah, so you were down there for your sophomore year. Then you came back junior year, and, and that was when you joined uh, the now Sporting KC, but at the time it was the KC Wizards. Um, what was – you You had your year there. How was your junior year? How was joining the DA Academy? Um, I'm guessing you could still play high school at that time. So how was all of that? Yeah, I think that was the only year that you could play high school and do the development academy. Okay. Uh, but to be honest with you, you know, we had an okay year uh, that year in high school, but I felt a lot of pressure, you know, coming <clears> off the state championship freshman year and mm-hmm. then leaving and going being with the national team sophomore year. I felt, you know, kind of a lot of pressure. And, uh, right. and I was nervous in a lot of the games playing high school soccer. Uh, but it was still a fun time and made a lot of, of really good, you know, relationships with, with some of the guys that I still stay in touch with today. Um, but then once that season was over, yeah, like you said, you know, I was able to play for the Kansas City Wizards Academy, which was always a dream of mine to play pro. And, mm-hmm. you know, playing for their academy, you were one step closer to being signed professionally. Um, at the time, I was looking at schools. And, you know, it was, it was the first year for the academy, first year for the Kansas City Wizards. So we actually had a lot of players from out of town, kind of all over the country. Uh, a lot of yeah. people from Iowa, you know, Nebraska, and so forth. Uh, so it was kind of cool because I never played with these guys before. And it was a really tough decision because I was playing for KCFC Alliance and we had one state, you know, I think for four or five years in a row and those guys didn't want to leave, uh, you know, that sure. team. So I was one of the only ones who left that team and, and kind of had to, to leave all the guys that I'd been with for the last couple of years uh, and join a new team where, where guys aren't really even from Kansas City or I've never played with before. So uh, that was another really interesting kind of moment in my career. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I made the switch, but it was definitely a very tough decision. For sure. And I definitely get that. And and I know for me personally, and a lot of our listeners, uh, you, you, you battle that you you grow up playing with your friends and, you know, you build that, that, that camaraderie. And then now there's, do I want to play at this next level? Well, playing at this next level might include leaving a lot of my friends and and some of it, the, the main reason why you get up and go play every day is because you get to hang out with them. So I definitely exactly. understand that. And, you know, it's a decision we all have to make. And some of us do, some of us don't. But it looks like in your end that it uh, it worked out for the best. Um, because from that, uh, you turned out to be, I guess, Sporting KC or the KC Wizards' first homegrown signing. And that was at 17 years old. So, like, that's crazy. You know, that's they, they put a lot of – investment and a and a lot of expectations on you so how was that how did you deal with the pressure before you were able to legally vote to uh <laughs> to, to be a yeah. player yeah that was really weird uh you know one being one of the first home runs in the league and the first one for kansas city uh i still had my senior high school like i yeah. had i hadn't uh you know i signed right before my senior year so then obviously i couldn't play high school soccer and um you know, oddly enough, my first day of training with the Wizards, I, I broke my finger. Um, so, you know, I used that as, a, as an excuse, like, oh, I can't play high school soccer because I broke my finger because it, it wasn't announced yet. It was going to be announced in like a week and, and they right. didn't want to be telling anybody. You know, everyone's like, oh, you played with a broken finger before. Like, what's really going on here yeah. you know, and so forth. Um, but it was cool because, you know, I would go to training in the morning and then I had a couple online classes and then like one or two in-person classes in the afternoon. So I'd go to training and then, and then go to school in the afternoon and see my friends, uh, do my homework in the evenings and obviously and, and keep doing that. Uh, but I had a lot of rookie duties with the wizards and, you know, they make you clean the dishes or fill up the fridge with Gatorade and water and so forth. Yep. And, uh, we would have a long practice every once in a while and, 
I'd be like, oh, man, like, I'm going to be late for, for school, you know. I was like, no, you got to do your rookie duties or, you know, uh-huh. you're going to get fined. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So there were a few times where I was late to, to school, um, you know, because I was having to do the dishes or whatever for the guys. Well, it sound, I mean, it just sounds like you being a freshman all over again. Uh, That's like, exactly you know, our, our freshmen don't have to clean dishes, but they're getting balls. They're taking the cones. Uh, they were filling up water pre-COVID. Um, so yeah, it just sounds like a extended freshman duties as an upperclassman. So that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. So you were a part of sporting KC for a few years. Um, you got into a few senior games. I know playing behind, uh, Andy for a bit. Um, but you were a part of that really memorable double post game that I know a lot of people here in KC watched and st- stayed up late to watch because, it was right when the Royals uh, won the the ALCS, or not the CS, but the um, wild card game. And the day before that game went into extra innings, so I'm up till 1 a.m. watching that. <laughs> then the next day, you guys are playing against uh, Portland, and we're up till freaking 1 a.m. watching that. So you get into the double post game. Uh, how was that? I remember watching you taking a. Uh, saving the PKs in net, and then I think you had to take a PK as well. Um, what was that game like? Yeah, so I obviously played for Kansas City for seven years. Uh, went on loan a bunch of different times. And, uh, you know, in my debut, Andy Grunenbaum gets hurt, and I got to come on. And in my debut, I, I end up saving a penalty. Um, yep. And then, you know, I've, I've enjoyed take, saving penalties kind of throughout my career. You know, it's, it's, it's been a cool challenge for me. So, you know, the day before this Portland game, I'm the backup goalkeeper to Tim Mealy, obviously, and, and they're doing PKs and, and they're shooting them on me, mm. um, you know, and everybody gets done and so forth. And I'm like walking there, everybody's walking inside. I'm like, ah, should I take a penalty? Like, just in case I'm like, nah, there's no way I'm going to have to take it. Right. Penalty. No way. No way. Yeah. Like there's no way. So yeah, long story short, we play Portland in Portland. Um, we're losing 1-0. It's like the 80, 80th minute, 85th minute. Tim gets a concussion. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to come on. And we end up scoring, like, in the last yep. last minute. Yep. And it's 1-1. And I'm like, oh, geez, like, here we go, you know. So we go into uh, extra time or overtime. And um, you know, we actually score again. And I'm like, oh, we're going to win yeah. this game. You know? I remember, two, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember that. Like, I'm like, oh, shoot, we're about to do this. And yeah, you know, we're dominating them at this point. They're tired. And then they just get kind of this unfortunate, uh, you know, cross into the box that kind of deflects around and they score in the last minute. So we tie 2-2 um, mm-hmm. and it comes down to penalties. And I'm like, okay, sweet. Like Kansas City's had some pretty good uh, success with penalties. We won yep. a couple open cups, you know, MLS yep. Cup. So, you know, I have this sheet. We typically have this sheet uh, that kind of has where, where guys go uh, or have gone in the past. And pretty much everybody's already been subbed out at this point. Right. Who, you know, who's on the sheet except for one guy. And it's Valeri. And he's, you know, he's the first penalty shooter. And he's gone down the middle a couple of times. And most of the time he goes to uh, the goalie's left, so my right. Uh-huh. And I'm like, okay, well, I think he's either going to go down the middle or he's going to try and, like, trick me. Right. And, uh, you know, he ends up going to my left or down the middle, and I save. And I'm like, okay, here we go. You know, here, we're going yeah, to win. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, then I end up saving, I think, three or four penalties. And we have the double post where – we have a chance to win. Hits the post, rolls along the line. I start to run and celebrate. It, yep. it hits the post and bounce out. Uh, you know, so for whatever reason, the soccer gods didn't want us to win that game. Um, oh, so we that was uh, that was Saad. My that was a, a friend yeah. of mine, Saad. Yeah, Saad Abdul Salam. And yeah, um, yeah that was a they, uh, fortunate. I think they named a, a bar there called the Double Post Bar, and they, they, sure they said that Saad Saad can go and drink for free there whenever yep. he wants. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess best case for him is he gets traded to Portland and now it's it's okay. Um, but, yeah. yeah, that's uh, unfortunate to have a bar named after you off of, off of that type of event. But that's how the game goes. It can be very cruel to the ones that love it the most. Um, yeah, I think it was the longest shootout or still is the longest shootout in MLS history. It's probably one of the more wild games in MLS and definitely my, uh, my craziest game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and you touched on it a bit before we got into it that you've had a few loan spells in the UL, uh, USL. Um, you, were, you were down with the energy. You've been with San Antonio. 
Uh, I forgot the – there's one more, I think. Um, I know you're with Galaxy 2 for a bit. Um, but with all the different clubs that you've been, uh, is there any one that's been more memorable or one that stood out more than the other, whether it's the locker room presence, the atmosphere of the games, the, the manager, the, the players, anything that stood out more than the other? Yeah. Uh, so obviously my, my loan spell in San Diego is going pretty well right now, but uh, my most memorable, my favorite loan spell was my very first one to Orlando city at yeah. the time they were in, they were in USL. Uh, that was my first, uh, you know, real shot at playing professional games. Yep. Um, other than the reserve league and MLS, uh, you know, I had a, a roommate there, Christian Duke, who's been kind of one of my best friends. He's from Kansas city. Uh, he's yep, been one of my best friends ever since. Yeah. And, you know, I got a decent amount of minutes there. Our team was really good. We actually won a USL championship. So uh, that was the same year we won an MLS Cup as well. So that was a really memorable year for me. Um, and it was just really cool to to grow. I was still young, you know, in 2013. And, uh, you know, I had to grow as a, as a person living away from my family and my friends, uh, but also as a player being on this new team, um, you know, and trying to fight to earn the starting spot and trying to fight to win a championship. So that was probably one of my favorite loan spells. And, and, you know, we had Adrian Heath as a head coach who coaches Minnesota United now, and they're in the semifinals of, of the tournament here. So, uh, you know, that was kind of a good experience for me, uh, you know, and it really helped me grow as a, as a player and as a person. Okay. And, and with playing with all these different teams, I, I, I know a lot of us that, that don't make it to that pro level, we maybe play with a few club teams. Uh, your high school team, and, and then that's it, right? Maybe fortunate enough to play college. But playing with all those teams, one com common effect I'm starting to get with a lot of the guests is the mental aspect of it. And when you're playing with all these different teams, it's a different locker room environment. It's a different manager. It's different players. So it's very tough for you to kind of, I feel like, get get comfortable and, and get, you know, with, with the locker room. So how's that – what was that mental uh, aspect like of having to go from locker room to locker room and manager to manager? And, you know, did, did that start to take a toll on you at all? Yeah, it did. You know, the inconsistency a little bit. But uh, growing up, I had a lot of different coaches in my club teams. You know, I, I kind of bounced around from different teams. I was on the B team. I was on the A team. I went from Legends to KCFC to Blue Valley, you know, and so forth. So, uh I, I really enjoyed being with a couple different coaches because I was able to a, you know, make a bunch of friends and B kind of learn from each coach and develop my own style of play uh, yeah. and develop my own style of goalkeeping. And same with when I went on loan was uh, as a person, I hung out with a bunch of different guys and kind of was like, yeah, I like, you know, that kind of personality. I don't like that personality you know, and created my own personality as well as having different styles of play, maybe a three back system, a five back mm -hmm. system, you know, a four-back system and so forth, and kind of being able to, uh, you know, like I said, develop my own style of goalkeeping, um, you know, and just kind of get various experiences. I think that we learn from experiences, and getting a bunch of different experiences for me has helped me grow, uh, you know, as a player and as a person. But, uh, like, mentally, yeah, it's been tough. You know, there's been some really hard times, you know, sometimes. But uh, you just kind of have to keep grinding and, and going forward, you know, um, kind of the, the survival of the fittest outlasts everybody, right? So if you can keep yep. your, your mental side of your game, uh, you know, good and keep getting stronger and stronger, um, then, you know, you'll, you'll last a long time playing this game. For sure. And, and you, you're definitely someone that's, that's in a position to speak about lasting a long time in the game. You've been pro since you were 17 and, you know, you're still in it. So, you know, that's that says a lot, lot about you and, and how you've been able to manage through these uh, the waters of the MLS and USL. Uh, so after you, you, you were fortunate enough to play for the Galaxy and and although you didn't spend too many games with the first team, you still got into some games like honestly, what what was that like playing for the L.A. Galaxy in that stadium? I know that at least from TV the the environment looks crazy there and it looks like an awesome atmosphere so so what was that like what was the fan base like how how was that whole thing yeah I actually had a contract right before I went to the galaxy to play in Norway um but the coach 
uh, the Galaxy called me, Kurt Anafo, and he's like, no, we, we want you here, you know, come here. And I was like, well, who wouldn't want to play in L.A., you know? For I mean, sure. I think for that sure. if you, you ask some, some people around the world, you know, what are some MLS teams that you want to play for, you know, regardless of how they're doing right now, they're going to say, I want to play for the Galaxy. Always. Um, you know, and, and with all the championships that they had had, <clears throat> Uh, you know, it was going to be a great opportunity for me. Um, but the fans were great. I lived in a great spot. And then the players that we had on the team were, were obviously superstars that I looked up to growing up. I was a Chelsea fan uh, growing up as a kid. And, you know, guys like Ashley Cole, I really, really looked up to. And he ended up kind of taking me under his wing. And, you know, we, awesome. were, we were good buddies. Yeah. And then um, a guy like Jermaine Jones, he was my locker buddy. So he was right next to me all day. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of just talking about his life and so forth. So it was kind of cool to experience this guy who's played at the top level and overseas and so forth. Um, you know, and then Jonathan Dos Santos, who, who's obviously their best player right now and, uh, you know, playing for Mexico. It was, it was really cool to learn from him and, and to kind of uh, understand mm -hmm. what he does day in and day out and learn how to be a true pro. You know, these guys really, uh, you know, showed me what it's like to be a true pro and how to take care of your body uh, to kind of outlast uh, how long the season is and so forth. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, and after that, so you're at Columbus Crew, which is, uh, I mean, who you're currently with, you're on loan, obviously, right now with San Diego. Um, so before we get to that, though, a few things at Columbus. One, you played with uh, U.S. men's national team goalie, Zach Steffen, who's now uh, bought with Man City. He's on loan with them. And then you also played under uh, Greg Berhalter, um, who's now the U.S. men's national team coach. Uh, so, and I mean, there's a few other players, Will Trapp, Jazzy Zarda. So you, you've played with uh, some big name people. Uh, the main thing was under Greg Berhalter, do you see any similarities between how the men's national team was playing before this whole break uh, and the Columbus crew? And do you see like, hey, that's definitely Berhalter trying to get them to do this where he was trying to do that with us or, you know, anything like that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a system that's very hard to do with the national team uh, because they don't get as much time together. Uh, yep. You know, they're not training day in and day out. But I can definitely see that he's trying to keep that same system. They have something called wing progression uh, where they try and get kind of the forward and the, and the wingers to make these runs and these passes in behind. Uh, they also build out a lot, uh, you know, and drop yep. down their six yep. to help build out. Uh, so you can definitely see that the pieces that he's trying to, to build are there. He has a really young team. Um, I think they're going to have success kind of going forward. They do the keto diet as well. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what we did when he was in Columbus. And, you know, it's tough to stay on a consistent keto diet when these guys are going back to their clubs or going back to different countries and so forth. That might not give them the options to do that. So um, his style is a little bit more difficult to, to, to do with the national team, but you can definitely see the pieces are there. And um, I think that they're going to have a lot of success coming up here. Um, especially as those guys kind of break into to his system. It's not an easy system to do. You know, he, he wants to play out, you know, a lot of the time, uh, you know, and so forth. He wants to, to break on counterattacks. So, uh, you know, I really enjoyed playing under him. He's an unbelievable coach. Um, he, his, his soccer uh, mindset is just unbelievable. Uh, he loves talking about different plays and so forth. And, um, yeah, like I said, I, I really, really enjoyed playing under him. That time. Yeah, I've – I've been fortunate enough. I've met Greg. Um, I saw I was able to watch a, a men's national team training session and um, here in KC and, and Greg did a Q&A with some coaches that were able to get invited. So I was able to get uh, some one on one time with him and, and kind of to pick his brain about some things. So I was uh, excited to, to do that. And you've actually played for him. So that's big. Um, and now you are playing for U.S. soccer legend uh, Landon Donovan at the San Diego Loyal. This is his first season as a manager. Uh, how, how's that been? Obviously, I don't want you to throw, throw coach under the bus, but, uh, I mean, what's it been like playing for someone who's played at, at a high level and someone that I know has experienced a lot of success? Yeah, well, first off, he's like an unbelievable human being. Uh, that's the first thing that – I kind of learned when I came here was uh, how humble he is as a person. Um, and he's a really, really good manager, uh, if that makes sense. He can manage his players really well. He manages our team. And then we yeah. have the assistant coach, Nate Miller, who does a lot of the coaching. 
Okay. Um, he's the, he's the assistant coach. And then you have, you know, Landon who's more of a, as a manager, um, uh, and then kind of chiming in his experience here and there. So a lot of times he's working with the forward, uh, on stuff and really helping them. But I also really like picking his brain because, uh, you know, we're talking about right now, for example, when there's a free kick, you know, around the 18, how many guys am I going to put in the wall? Yeah. Well, he's sitting there going like, have you ever thought about just putting like, two or three guys in the wall instead of four or five and I was like you know yeah you because I can't really see the ball when you have four sure. or five guys right yep. but it is harder for a guy to get it up and up and over the wall however you know if he does get it up and over the wall it's probably going to be a goal yeah so he's yeah. like why don't you just like in training put two guys there you know or, or one guy and just see what happens and because at the end of the day yeah if the guy shoots it if he just blasts it you know the goalie's probably going to save it if he's standing in the middle of the goal and so forth so these are kind of situations that we like to discuss and and talk about and building out and so forth so i've really enjoyed kind of picking his brain on on the uh you know mindset he has in soccer and, and kind of his experience during his career yeah, no, that that's awesome. I I feel like you, you've said a few different names. I've got a buddy that that works for the Loyal, um, doing some like photography work and and social media work. So it's it's funny how the soccer community is very tight knit, um, especially the higher up you move. Uh, so yeah, man. It's so small world. Yeah, small soccer world for sure. So, all right. So, John, you've you've got your college degree. Uh, before we got on, you were telling me that you're getting your master's now. You're a licensed realtor. Um, what's next for you after uh, after you take the gloves off for good? Is it is it real estate? Is is you know you still trying to figure that out? Is it maybe back into soccer as a coach or a keeper coach? What's uh what's on your mind? Yeah, you know. Uh... When I first sat down in Peter Mason's office before I signed, you know, he said, hey, you know, if, you, if you're going to sign this contract, then I want you to do something with your life outside of soccer. You know, I don't want you just going and golfing all day. I don't want you playing video games all day long, you know, and so forth. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to sign the Generation Adidas contract where they gave me money for school. Mm -hmm. So I ended up finishing my degree online through Southern New Hampshire, and I still had some money left. So I was like, well, why not keep going and get my master's? So yeah, uh, about to get my master's in business. And like you said, I got my real estate license. Um, I'm a third gen generation realtor. My grandma was a realtor and my, uh, my mom still is a, a real estate agent. So uh, it's kind of cool to work with them on the side. You know, if I do have free time or some of the sporting Kansas city guys, you know, when they're looking for houses and so forth, you know, just kind of help them for a sure. little bit. But um, I also have a, a small real estate, um, rental property company that I started back um, when I was 19. So, you know, I've got a couple of houses that I rent out and so forth. So that's a big passion of mine outside of soccer. Um, yeah. I have always enjoyed coaching. I did a lot of coaching in Kansas city, you know, individual privates and mm -hmm. so forth. So I don't know what, what the future holds for sure. I ultimately would, would love to be a GM or a technical director of a, of a you know professional team one day. Um, yeah. So you know, that, that's obviously something that down the road I could be or something in the real estate world for sure, since I have such a family uh, background in that. That's I'm not awesome. as sure yet. I, I plan on playing. I played 11 years. I plan on playing, you know, a couple more. So Right. We got another 11 more years left. Uh, left there you of go. The thing. Hey, there well, you go. I think that's awesome that uh, the PV, I mean, asked, said that to you to, tell you to be, you know, have something outside of soccer and, and golfing in the hobbies, because I think that's a very big thing when you have a career is to have those hobbies or to have things that can mm -hmm. occupy your time in a positive manner. Um, because I, I know that when you have training for just a few hours in the morning, you know, the, the day is long and, and you can get lost in it if, if you're not focused. For sure. You know, and, uh, the big thing, the big takeaway I got from that was to kind of take care of your body. Another thing that Landon mentioned to me the other week was, you know, when he was playing, we'd have practice, he'd come home and he'd spend pretty much the rest of his day getting ready for the, for tomorrow's training session. Right. Um, you know, and that's kind of how I've lived my life too, is, you know, training's over and so forth. I come home, you know, maybe do my schoolwork and so forth and then do maybe do another workout, you know, stretch, yoga, whatever. Uh, make sure you do your ice baths and so forth to get ready for training for the next day. So, uh, you know, while we only train maybe three, four hours a day, it's definitely a, a full day, you know, uh, job to kind of get ready. 
Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, hey, I wanted to get into some questions that the uh, that our followers have have wanted to ask. So one of my one of my best friends, he's he is my goalie when we played club. So he was really excited when I told him that I had a goalie on board. Um, so one question I have is, what advice do you wish that you would have got as a youth player? Um, looking back at it now, you said you've had an 11 year so far pro playing career. What's something now that you wish you would have heard back when you were that 15, 16 year old that just won a state championship off to residency, getting ready to become a homegrown player. What's uh what's something you wish you would have heard? Yeah, well, I had a lot of good mentors growing up. So like in re regards to, you know, oh, and you work harder, blah, 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 stuff like that. You know, I, I definitely had that. And, and I feel like I really took that to heart. But uh, lately, I really think that, um, you know, the advice that I would want to give is to just enjoy it, you know, have fun, enjoy it because, you know, it comes fast and it goes fast. Uh, you know, soccer is a lifestyle, you know, and, and it's going to be your lifestyle and, and you just got to enjoy it, you know, because, uh, you know, we only get one life and yeah. uh, it goes fast. So the 11 years feel like they've blown by for me. Um, you know, thinking back on when I first started, it's tough to kind of remember that. So really kind of taking the moment and, uh, and enjoy it would be, uh, would be kind of the advice that I give. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what's your why? Like, What's the reason why you get up every day, you go out, you put your gloves on, you put your cleats on, you're, you're feeling sore, you're tired, you know, you're, you just, you've just been sent on loan somewhere. What, what gets you through those dark times, right? What gets you up out of the bed and ready to compete at your best? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I'd say I have two whys. Uh, one would be my family, uh, you know, because the stuff that they've sacrificed for me um, and the support that they've kind of given me, uh, you know, I want to uh, prove to them that I can do this, you know, and, and show them the success and make them feel proud. Um, but I also say kind of my, my uh, drive, determination to win. That's something that, that Peter also kind of instilled in me and, and all of his guys is uh, the determination to win, you know, and winning is a habit and you have to win every single day, yep. uh, you know, and so, if you have a bad day, uh, you have a bad game, you have bad practice, whatever, you know that you have another day tomorrow. And that's the great thing about soccer is you have another, you have another game, you have another practice. Um, and so for me, it's, it's my family and then also the drive to, to win and to get better every day. That's cool. That's cool, man. Um, all right. So one question that I'm, I'm really big on asking and I just love hearing people's responses is your, your five aside. Okay. So, you're you're a keeper and if you know some of the other guests when i've talked to them about picking their 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 players they always struggle on the goalie you you've taken that you've got that taken care of so if you could pick four other people who you've played with at any given point whether it's been at training in a match whatever um who are four other people that you would put on your five aside and then we'll get another one of people who you just – your dream five aside. Okay. Uh, great question. Well, I'll go with who I've played against five okay. aside. First would be um, Neymar. Jesus. Coutinho. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Gabriel Jesus. Holy smokes. All right. So it's the Brazilian national team. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and in the midfield, ooh, good, good question. Mm. That's a tough one. That many? I mean, you've got a front three of what you just said. I don't really yeah. think. Oh, I'll go with. Uh, <laughs> just because I don't know why, but I'm just gonna go with Fellaini. Okay. Just as my holding midfielder is a big body. Is this uh, with the Afro or without the Afro? This is with the Afro. Okay. All right. I was just <laughs> making sure. I was just making sure. All right. And then now let's get a uh, – let's get five or four other people who you wish you could play with. And just Ooh. alive. Doesn't have to be currently playing, but anyone, anyone that's still alive and breathing. 
Okay, that's it. Wow. Um, I'll go with Messi. Does okay. that count? Yeah, he's he's, yeah, he's, I'm a, he's been mentioned a few times. Uh, well, I'm a Messi fan, you know, for all you Cristiano lovers. Uh, I'm a Messi fan. I'll go with him. I'll go with um, Yaya Torre. Okay. Oh, Yaya Torre. Love it. Um, I think that he would be unbelievable and small-sided, so I'm going to go with um, this is a tough one. Either Luis Suarez or Sergio Aguero. I'm going to go with Suarez. I just think that he's like a winner. And he's just going to like, you know, fight in a yeah. small sided game. Just make, so, I, mean, I mean, it's good that he's on your team because you know, he's not going to try to go after you with a, a bite, a bite or two if, if you make a save or anything. Yes. And then I probably have to go with, Mm, Salah, Mohamed Salah. Mo Salah. Yeah, he's got uh, two new tro- trophies to add to his. Uh, yeah, his, I think that's a winning team there. picture. Yeah. All right, so we've got we've got your two your two teams there. Um, John, man, I appreciate you you being on the podcast. Uh, I know that you're probably the first person uh, on this season that I've had to kind of reach out to uh, to get on here just because we weren't, you know, we're not as as close of friends as as I am with some of the other people. Uh, So I really appreciate you being on. Um, Is there any any final words or any final things you want to leave with the uh, the listeners before you uh, you head on to living your life in San Diego for the night? Well, I just wanted to appreciate you for having me on. You know, I know we don't stay in touch too often, but you do send me kind of messages here and there and and when you watch my games and so forth. And uh, I just wanted to thank you, and I appreciate that you kind of started this alumni game. Um, You know, I'm going to try and make it out every year because it's kind of around Thanksgiving-ish and so forth when I'm back home. Um, So I I missed the last one, but, uh, you know, I I did love that when I came out, so I really appreciate that, Um, you know, and, and, and go Mustangs. There we go. Go Mustangs, man. We, uh, we just got approved for our fall season. Um, so that, that's going to go on. The whiteout's still going to happen that first game. So I'm really excited to, to get that going. And, and hopefully we can kind of get back to our winning ways that, uh, that you experienced while you were there. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, bring home a state championship if we can. So uh, let's do it. John, man, I appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for hopping on. Um, Everyone, you will be able to uh, listen to the podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on our website, www.nostressmidwest.com slash podcast. Um, And we look forward to seeing you and hearing from you the next time, all right? Take care, everyone. Thank you. Yep, John, thanks, man. Have a good one. All right, you too.